the last part of the empennage kit. Well, sort of. We're going to make the trim tab too. got a few um, problematic holes to get in here. I couldn't get the pneumatic squeezer to dimple these. I got this guy out then I realized that I can't really get that in there because there's nowhere for the bottom piece to go. I might be able to uh, but I figured I'd check the plans and the plans say to use a different sort of rivet there. So I'm going to check out and see what kind of rivet that is. It might not even need a dimple. So, time to do some investigation. Okay, so this is the guy we're using. Um, and it, it most certainly would look better with a dimple. So, back to the original conundrum. How the hell do I dimple those holes? I'll figure it out. I think I've, I've hit a spot where we're going to slow down a little bit. Hold up. You may notice the sound quality has degraded terribly. I switched to a shotgun mic attachment in an attempt to get better, less echoey audio in my garage. I now realize this was a mistake. Unfortunately, I have a heap of audio that uses this setup, so bear with me. I really have to quit buying my camera equipment from Walmart. 
Side note, if you know of a good wireless lavalier mic that works with the GoPro 8, shoot me a link in the comments. I could really use one. Uh, on the right elevator, we just kept marching through and got it built. It's now telling me to consult the plans for the trim system I have bought and that it's easier to get that installed while I still have additional access to the inside of the elevator. Uh, I went with electronic servo trim and that means that I've got some electronics uh, to map out and uh, quite a few different little systems pieces to put together which I'm really excited for uh, before we just pick up where we left off. So I'm going to take a minute, get those laid out and see where we go from here. The electronic trim kit allows me to adjust the trim via a button on either the dashboard or my control stick or even both. The kit seen here includes a servo motor, buttons, indicator lights, brackets, and a ton of hardware. It was a little overwhelming just going through it, but it was necessary to dry fit everything and see what would be required in order to get it installed. Many of the pieces would wind up needing to be primed before I could take the installation any further. In fact, going through this wasn't really required in order to close up the elevator, but it was helpful to get an idea of what was coming up. I'm not incredibly enthusiastic about where they've recommended this go. In order for that to be centered in here, I'm quite a bit off from where it says I need to be to where I am. Before drilling any holes, I'm going to mark where I have it set and I'm going to go read online. It'll just be my go to move. Confirmed that the position of this cannon should be moved a little bit. Um, not sure why it's different on the plans. Might be different brackets. It's changed since those plans are drawn. I don't know. But on we go. direction through this there's a certain amount of almost self-reliance they're intending on which is kind of nice although it would have been helpful to have the, the correct dimensions on the plans we were able to figure that out and the rest of it is kind of fun to just take the parts and see how they work and get them to fit hey still enjoying my videos that's awesome why don't you go ahead and give me a thumbs up, and if you haven't, subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, if you're wondering what I'm doing with some of this stuff, we're making wooden blocks and guides and clamping jigs in order to fold some of the trailing edge of this elevator. Um, it's actually pretty freaking cool once you see what happens.
top up. Man, that was rough. Uh, it's, it's keeping an eye on everything, trying to make sure that one block isn't slipping or the other block isn't slipping or the third block isn't pulling the other two away. And, and all of that happened at one point or another. Um, but it, it looks really good. I think I kept it all together. Um, the sight from a, a hair of unevenness with the rivet gun, because uh, that's completely new to me. Um, it, it looks really nice. So we're deviating a little bit from the instructions here. Uh, last time, I attached these two together per the instructions. The problem is when you do that, it gets a little tricky to attach this whole unit to the spar here. So I'm going to skip that for now. Why? Uh, because I can, and because I don't want to use the the rivet gun and bucking bar to put that on like I had to last time. I'd rather squeeze it on. So. If I skip that and I squeeze these parts on, and then I squeeze this on, I can simply go back and install this without a lot of work. It saves me from having to get the rivet gun and bucking bar out. Why? Because they scare me. Went to put this in the skin and realized it's not dimpled. I think this goes back to when I really just wanted to rivet something and I skipped some dimpling. Um, I dimpled parts of it, everything that needed to be dimpled up until now, but none of this is dimpled. So I gotta do that, but now that it's welded together, I think I made things really hard on myself. We'll figure that out now. stiffeners I went with fuel tank sealant I had some on hand if you remember I was bemoaning the nasty burnt rubber toothpaste stuff uh, which really wasn't that bad this time around because I've got some on order but it seems to be back ordered uh, I'm using an RTV um, non silicone based sort of adhesive goop uh, which comes equally as recommended by the instructions and by the community online. Uh, I like this, the idea of this, I should say, because I have this nice applicator uh, which beats the tongue depressor and trying to get it into the base of the elevator down here. Um, I say that now, let's, let's see how it actually pans out.
last few rivets for now on this piece. They're blind rivets because I can't get back in there uh, where this trim spar tucks inside to the elevator. From here, all I have to do is make the trim tab and then kind of button up this area and that'll mean the left elevator is done. The right one's done. The rudder's done. Stabilizer's done. Both vertical and horizontal. Which means I'm closing in on the end of these, this first kit uh, pretty quickly. We'll talk about what's coming up. Hey, that's it for this one. The ending here is pretty bad, oh, so I'm going to scrap it. Instead, I've got a sneak peek at some future footage and some final thoughts. I seem to be consistently counting the days until the empanage is finished. Truth is, I'm seeing that the work is in the details, and I'm getting my first glimpse of the old adage, 90% done, 90% to go. I really have no reason to be in a hurry to finish this and to move on to the next part, so I'm going to try and stop the I'm nearly done with the tail talk. Next time, I'm going to highlight more of the trim tab, finishing the leading edges of the elevators, and looking at what's left on the elevators and what's next. Truth is, I don't really know what's next. I'm nearing the point where I'd like to start the wings, but they're held up at the factory and could be done any time in the next 12 weeks, delayed from an original delivery date of 3 or 4 weeks ago. More on this to come. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Ryan Flies.